most Americans have this day off, but for the heroes defending that right, it's just another day at the office. And what an office. And what a job. Welcome, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm Neil Cavuto, and this is a special Your World. Half a world away, they're watching over us, protecting us, safeguarding us, making sure we have the freedom to enjoy this day with family, even while they're a long, very long way from their families. On this money show, we decided to take a look at their prices contributions this special day. With us now from Baghdad is Major Jay Antonelli and First Sergeant Seed Valley. Also uh, from Los Angeles, First Lieutenant Rob Notzinger, who just returned from Iraq, and from San Antonio, back with us is Specialist Jose Martinez. He sustained severe wounds and burns over 40% of his body since having more than 30 surgical procedures. He's working hard to drum up support for something called the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes to help wounded heroes. Uh, Special Martinez, to you first. How is that going, that, that coalition? It's going really good, Neil. Um, we have a lot of people supporting us. We have a lot of people believing in the organization, and it's something that they should believe in uh, very well, as you mentioned at the top of the hour. We have soldiers in other countries right now defending our, our freedom, and, and for this beautiful holiday, it's Thanksgiving, being able to pass all that up just to be defending our country and give us the opportunity to do these certain things. So it's coming along really great. We, you know, you can never say enough, and you can never have enough. And we, we ask that we continue to have a, a, a lot more support from your, from your viewers. You know, Jose, I remember last time you were with us, I had asked you the question, did you ever feel bitter or angry over what happened to you and the, and the horror you experienced when your Humvee ran over that landmine? And you said no. And I was amazed then, as were thousands of our viewers who wrote in, how do you maintain your composure? Well, Neil, this is how it is simply. It's because of the fact that me being able to use my experience to be able to help other soldiers out there, other troops that are going through so much as well as I am, it's, uh, me, it makes me feel good. And it's therapy for me as well. Um, knowing I can help another soldier with my experience really helps me out and it keeps me going every day when I feel I'm having a bad day I always run into another soldier that's having an even worse day and I'm able to talk to them and motivate them and change everything they're going through and uh, that that's what helps me going on every day and to be able to know that people appreciate what I do um, that, that really it's therapy for me it really is uh, Sergeant Valley in Baghdad with Major Antonelli well, do you look at your mission in, in, in Iraq especially this time of year and, and, and just say, boy, this has been going on a while. This is getting kind of tiring. Absolutely not, Neil. It's a privilege to serve the United States of America. And you've got to understand, this is just the infancy of this operation. This country has been devastated for nearly 35 years. And if anyone thought that this country, the infrastructure, the financial system, the economic development was going to be fixed in such a short time, I think they were looking at something unreal. Major, you've, you've seen the Iraqi people up close. A lot of the images we see on, let's say, other networks is that they're angry and bitter and screaming at us and want us out of there. What do you see? Uh, that's not the case at all, Neil. Um, uh, for most part, the Iraqi people want us here. Uh, we are providing um, lots of putting lots of money into the country, back into the reconstruction efforts. Uh, in Sadr City alone, we put $160 million into the reconstruction effort in, in Sadr City. Uh, we've created 16,000 jobs in that city alone, and we're putting money back into the economy. And uh, like First Sergeant said, it's not going to happen in a day, but uh, the, the, the country is moving forward, and um, it will provide, uh, we'll have a democratic uh, system here in place. Well, and Go ahead. secondly, we can, we, we can root the terrorists out like we've done in Najaf and we've done in Fallujah, but how we win the real hearts and minds of the Iraqi people are providing the basic living supplies like running water, electricity, which we boosted way beyond pre-war levels. Uh, 300 schools have been renovated and 300 schools isn't going to get it done but it's a start because this is something that's been neglected for so long and uh, you know electrical services just different staples of life that maybe Americans and the rest of the world take for granted this is something that we're bringing via the implementation of democracy to an area in Iraq that's never seen democracy. You know, that's how we're going to win this battle. Very, very good, strong words, sir. Uh, L Lieutenant Nostinger, I know you're in Los Angeles, but you had been working in Ramadi. That is a hot spot. Uh, it was a violent spot. 
but you were noticing even there improvements that were generally not picked up in the media. Tell me what you saw. Oh, definitely. The uh, efforts that my colleagues and I in civil affairs did on a daily basis don't usually get the press, and it's kind of frustrating for us because all you see are the little flashes of violence that get edited together, and it makes it seem like a terrible place when uh, the vast majority of things that are going on on a daily basis are the refurbishment projects that we are doing um, every day. And so it's I, we just feel bad because the we don't think the American people are getting the correct picture of what's going on over there. Lieutenant, what Americans are getting is this mention of a quagmire that we're getting in, in deep there with no exit strategy, uh, uh, the Vietnamization of Iraq. What do you say? What I see is that we're working ourselves out of a job every day. I mean, I could not really imagine a realistic better situation for Iraq right now. Um, the timeline that we had when we were over there, where we wanted to be, the progress and things like that, um, we far uh, we exceeded our expectations simply because the Iraqi people were much more uh, much ready, much more ready to take their own country back than we had expected. So. Uh, the progress is is very w good over there right now. So, Jose Martinez, knowing what you've been through, uh, and that these were some Iraqis who perpetrated this horror on you, you don't have any any doubts of, of the worthiness of your mission and what you and your colleagues did. No, not at all, Neil. Um, I feel. I feel honored to be a soldier. I wear my scars and with great pride and honor. Nobody's going to take that away from me. Um, I, I did my mission with uh, with the best ability that I could, and I served my country with the best ability that I could. And there's nobody's going to take that away from me. It's always going to be here in my heart for the rest of my life. And uh, it's something that, that you just can't take away. And there's no doubt in my mind that uh, every, everybody that's over there now, the mission will be accomplished. And just like the first sergeant, the major said, and the lieutenant, it's something that's not just going to happen overnight. It's going to take time, and that's what people need to start learning how to deal with and start saying that, hey, we're going to support these troops when they start coming back and while they're over there now. Gentlemen, I want to thank you for all you do and have done. You make it easy for me just to read a prompter, but you guys are the heroes. Thank you very much. Thank you, now. All right. My next guest is a Marine mom. Her son is in Iraq this Thanksgiving, but he didn't have to be. His time there was up. And he volunteered to stay on. Joining us now with his incredible story is Beverly Kay. She has asked us not to show any pictures of her son for his safety or where he is fighting now for his safety. We will honor that. Beverly, thank you for joining us. Thank you. What have you heard from him? <clears throat> the last time I heard from him uh, was the 8th of November. Uh, very, very short, very, but to the point. Mom, I'm alive. I'm well. I'm safe. Tell everybody I love them. Now, he had an opportunity some time back to come home, as did his yes, entire did. platoon. And they heard that reservists would come up to replace them, and they didn't want that to happen. Explain what happened. That's correct. Um, the CO got in touch with my son, and he said, 30 minutes, there's a meeting. Get your platoon together. They did. Uh, and the CO said, we're getting ready for the fall rotation. Who wants to go home? Uh, the Marines huddled, and there was a little buzz, and one of the Marines stepped forward and said, Sir, if we go home, sir, who will take our place? And the CO told him, Well, more than likely, they'll be calling up reservists to take your place. So the Marines huddled again, and there was a little more conversation among them, and a different Marine stepped forward, and he said, Sir, we volunteer to do another seven months, sir, if some of the reservists can stay home with their families over the holidays. Wow, incredible. At that point, then, they all turned and looked at my son. And he told me, when he was telling me this the end of June on the phone, he said, Mom, they're a brave bunch of guys. They know what they're doing. They respect me. And he said, I trust every single one of my Marines with my back. Beverly, I'll tell you something. You must be one heck of a mom because you've raised one heck of a son. Do you look, obviously, at all the images you see coming out of Iraq these days? It's obviously a pretty violent place, even though there's a lot of improvement going on there. Does it bug you the way the media portrays it? It certainly does because I think all of our military needs to be commended for their dedication, 
uh, not just to each other, not just to brotherhood, their dedication to state, their dedication to this country, to their job. I really, I just think it's awesome the way they are. I agree with you. Beverly, I want to thank you and your son. You're in our thoughts and prayers this holiday season. Be well. Thank you, and I hope everybody has a happy Thanksgiving. You too. Beverly Kay, thank you.